Hi everybody, I'm Michael Feldstein from eLiterate and the Empirical Educator Project and I have something exciting to show you today. Uh, you're going to see a rapid prototype of something I've been calling ALDA, the AI Learning Design Assistant. If you've been reading eLiterate lately, you know about ALDA and its aspirations, so I won't go into that now. What I want to show you today um, is a working prototype of what ALDA could look like. And the purpose of a rapid prototype is to try it out, to test it out before um, we get expensive programmers building expensive software that's expensive to change. So you're going to leave this with the ability to not only try ALDA out with some colleagues, but also to modify it and uh, find the changes that work for you. Pretty cool. So um, what you're seeing before you is the chat GPT screen. Everything we're going to do is just straight up chat GPT prompt magic um, with uh, a pl a one plugin to read a PDF. You can see I'm using chat GPT plus. You need that to use the plugin. Everything else is straight through the prompt. Now, this is not the way we will actually write ALDA. We will be programming ALDA. This way is going to have some limitations to it. I'll get to them. Um, I'll call them out as I get to them. Um, but I want you to be able to play with this um, and figure out what it is we want to build before we build it. Um, so that that's one of the great advantages of it. All right. You can see that I've pasted a very long prompt into the prompt window already. And uh, you can see also that I have a PDF reading plugin. Um, there are a number of plugins that read and interpret PDFs for um, ChatGPT. It doesn't matter which one you use as long as it works. Just try one, put one in, and you're set to go, right? So on the blog post, you'll have this prompt. You just have to paste it into the window and run it. Okay, so now this is a long prompt. ChatGPT has to think about it for a minute. And it's long enough that it loses scroll, so I have to scroll down to get it going. Now, the first thing you'll notice is this is actually working as a computer programming. Um, ChatGPT in the prompt window has a very light programming syntax. So you can actually write very simple programs on top of ChatGPT. That's what we've done. Usually you get a blank window. You're used to just uh, asking it or telling it whatever it is you want. In this case, ChatGPT is engaging with us and asking us. It's introducing itself to us. So uh, it's telling us his name is Alda. It is a learning design um, apprentice. We're trying to frame for the user how to think about interacting with this. Very important in order to make sure that you're thinking about it the right way, using it safely, knowing what its limitations are, and so on. Now it's asking me to let it know when I'm ready to get started. Okay, let's go. And it's going to go. Now it's going to generate the steps in the process that we've developed. And when you look at the script, you'll see there are headings, step one, step two, step three. If I change those headings, it will change the list that it generates here. It's that simple, okay? You're just changing headings in the script. Um, and you can try shorter, longer, you can change the order. I will tell you, I had a longer script than this. Um, I had it um, check for alignment between assessment questions and learning objectives. And I had it generating discussion prompts and essay topics. It did a great job with both of those things, but it started to do a worse job of everything else. One of the disadvantages of this rapid prototyping approach that we're taking through the prompt window is that ChatGPT, like all of these large learning models, it has a limited memory. It, it, it starts to lose focus and forget, like all of us, if you give it a long set of instructions. So play around with it. Be aware that you're going to run into those limitations. Be aware that programmers have various ways to work around those limitations, right? So we're testing now. We're experimenting. We need to understand what the trade-off is in terms of getting that ability to mess around.
Okay, so we have our, our list of steps. You can see it's a pretty standard learning design um, interview process. Um, let's get, oops, started. It will correct spelling and that sort of thing, but I habitually fix those. So it's walking me through the step now, and it's basically asking for information about the um, the context here, right? It's doing a needs assessment. Now, this process that we're going through, I, I call it two-way prompting. Any conversation is a two-way prompting exercise, right? I give a prompt, you respond to that prompt, that your response then is a prompt to me to respond. And the way we phrase what we say to each other shapes the conversation, right? So prompt engineering is in some ways uh, especially in a context of something like Alda, is about learning how to write a good prompt, right? It's learning how to engage the other entity uh, in a way that's going to get a productive response. So I'm going to write this out. So we're going to create a lesson uh, on the functions of the super Supreme Court. Um, this is for a class eh, and a college undergraduate class called Introduction to U.S. Government. Um, I'm. I, you can tell I've run this experiment a bunch of times, but I'm not following a rigid script here. Um, I want to show you how fluid this is. Um, we'll make decisions as we go. Um, okay, this is uh, for a college called U.S. Government. Uh, students will have already learned about the three branch branches of government. Now I want to teach um, them more specifically about the judicial branch and the Supreme Court. Um, I'm going to say this lesson will be a homework assignment um, that will prepare students for um, um, higher order thinking ass assignments like discussions and essays. Now, I use the word homework even though this is intended to be a fully online class because ChatGPT doesn't necessarily understand um, online courses. It does in theory, but it tends to anchor to a more traditional notion of a face-to-face -face class. So if I use the word homework, that it keys into the self-paced um, uh, aspect of this process. Again, we, we can play with how we write the prompt to get the, the person entering the prompt um, to anchor, but uh, some of this is just skill and practice, right? Okay. So now it's going to give me back what it takes from um, what I've told it. And we can have a conversation about this. Remember, the purpose of Alda is to generate a first draft that's going to get you started um, in your learning design for your course. It's not intended to write a full course. Um, and it's it's just intended to speed up the process for you, take out some of the grunt work, maybe add a little bit of creativity to help you out. Um, so we're going to power through this. We're not going to worry too much about getting it exactly right, because at the end, we're going to export this into whatever learning platform you're using, your learning management system, your courseware, whatever it is, um, and you're going to continue to edit it, right? It would be irresponsible to just to put this out in front of students um, without having a human review it. Okay, so uh, like I said, I, I'm pretty happy with this. This is a pretty good analysis. I'm not gonna spend, I, 
I say I'm happy with it. I've barely looked at it. I'm, I'm just going to roll on. Um, let's continue. I know it does a reliably good job of, uh, of this sort of analysis um, based on the prompt that I've written because I've done it enough times, right? So now we're going to preview um, a tool that we'll use much more in the real ALDA when we actually program it, which is called Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG, which is a terrible acronym, right? The basic idea is we know that large language models make things up. Um, we know that they don't always cite sources, right? And we, we want to avoid both of those things when we're creating learning materials, right? So um, we want to draw directly from some learning content and have it use that, be able to cite it, be able to look at it, make sure that it is, um, that what the large language model is saying is actually accurate and consistent um, with what we're giving it. So this plugin, the PDF plugin that I asked you to make sure you have installed is a very simple primitive form of RAG. Uh, when we actually build the software, the Alda software, you should be able to have a directory, a repository, a folder of all the resources that you're going to use to build the class, as you normally would, right? So I'm just going to give it one article. We're going to use one article to build this class. And because I don't really trust um, this plugin that much, right? This is a pretty primitive, fragile way to do RAG. Um, I'm asking it to confirm that it is looking at the same article that I want it to look at. This is in the script. You can change the script. You'll see it's in plain English, right? This is the correct article. So let's continue. Okay, now it's going to give me a summary of the article. And I've chosen this article because it's about misconceptions, which uh, the um, chatbot, the chat GPT and others are not going to be great at um, getting, right? You want to make sure that you're testing these students from misconceptions, misunderstandings. But I could have just as easily chosen a journal article or anything else and challenged uh, the chatbot to do the best that it can uh, to come up with misconceptions. It's, it's not great, but it's not terrible at it. Um, and it might help you as you think through your learning design. Again, first draft, right? In this case, we have all of the misconceptions listed here, right here in the article. Um, this is great. Um, let's use this as the basis for our lesson. Okay, now it's it's going to dig into, right, the misconceptions. This is where it generates on its own. Again, it's got a head start because it just read the article. Um, and I'm gonna ask it to modify a little bit. Again, I always have the choice of um, running with it and editing it myself later. Um, or engaging in a dialogue. Right now I want to engage with a little bit of a dialogue. Let's say I especially want to focus on the division of powers among the three branches of government. Um, now I could tell it what to do, but I'm going to ask it instead. Um, um, how would you um, choose, um, let's say, which of these misconceptions would you choose to teach that particular emphasis, and how would you um, uh, approach them. Let's try that. Now, in, in addition to the fact that I don't write these prompts exactly the same every time, um, 
you have to remember that um, all of these large language models, um, they use randomness as a kind of proxy um, for creativity. Um, and if you get into the advanced programming stuff, you can actually control how much randomness is in there and how, therefore, how reliable versus creative the answer is that you get. Um, the point is that you can ask the exact, you can give it the exact same question and get a different answer every time. As a matter of fact, you can, you have this, this little button called regenerate. If you don't like what you get from it, you can ask it to try again. Okay. Again, I'm I'm happy with this. Um, these three misconceptions were the ones I was thinking about anyway. It has put a little thought into how to use those misconceptions. Um, okay. Now it's going to generate learning objectives. Now. I have written this script to do classic backward design, which everybody says they like, and nobody actually uses in its pure form because it's too hard. So here's what I would suggest. First, try it. Try it with a couple of colleagues. If it turns out to be easier to use backward design to generate a draft using this tool, great, you've improved your business process. If it doesn't work, Try changing the script. You can go in, you can edit, just keep a copy of the original. If you break something, you can actually ask ChatGPT to debug for you. You can say your script isn't running. Can, can you show it your script and have it tell you uh, what's wrong with it? And it will help you fix the script, okay? Uh, but for now, again, we're gonna go through, we have um, five, um, uh, learning objectives. Um, that's actually a lot um, for this script, the way it's running. I, I could do five learning objectives if we were programming this, but I don't want to overtax the system. So let's just, uh, let's stick with the first three. I haven't even looked at the first three, but let's keep it simple, right? Yes, let's proceed to the next step. And you can see it's, it's doing a pretty good job. Again, I this isn't, I'll, I'll want to refine, refine this and play with it, but this is moving pretty quickly. Now, again, according to backward design, we're going to generate assessment questions. Um, it's only designed to generate um, uh, multiple choice questions in this script. And honestly, it does a pretty uneven job of it. I actually like the way Claude generated um, assessment questions better, but I can't program Claude through the prompt um, the way I can with ChatGPT. Um, in any case, there are multiple ways that we can improve the assessment generation. Um, so this is not bad though, given what, given what we, uh, what we have. This is a good place for me to start. At least I have an assessment question for each learning objective. It looks good. Um, let's continue. And of course, we're going to generate the learning content. Um, now, what I find, at least with the way the script is currently written, is that I get something between an outline and a uh, full course description. And maybe that's fine. Maybe for my purposes of a rough draft, that's really all I want ChatGPT to do for me. Um, maybe I, I wanna fill it in myself, um, or maybe I wanna play with it to give me a fuller description. This is actually coming out um, a little bit more um, full, uh, than it often does. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with it. Um, uh, but let's, let's make a modification to it. Um, let's, uh, give the students a little motivation at the top of the lesson. Um, create a hypothetical uh, 
case that might come before the court and would impact, let's say, directly impact college students' lives. Um, uh, weave that into the introduction and where appropriate throughout the out the lesson. Now I could ask it to generate three different cases and choose the one that I want, but again, I'm just we're rolling through for a demo that's already longish and um, I'm already pushing the limits of ChatGPT's memory, so we'll go with it. Okay, it's given me a, 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 a hypothetical case. And again, it's regenerating the content. It's kind of fun watching this thing go. Okay, so you can see, for example, up here that it has um, made a reference back to our hypothetical scenario. Okay, we can play with this more, but again, let's go. Now it's going to show me the complete draft. We've actually done a lot of work. Um, this is a long video, but it's actually a short period of time to generate um, the amount of content that we've created. Think about how long it would take you as a learning designer, starting with a blank sheet of paper, a you know, you know, blank Word document, a blank Google Doc, however it is, whatever it is you use to start writing your learning design in, right? Um, now notice that it's placing the assessment questions um, where we want them to be. Um, and um, which is uh, right next to the misconceptions that we are struggling with. Um, yeah, so we now have the, the full content. Um, let's please add the learning objectives and the full information for the assessments, including answers and feedback. Now, ideally, um, in, in the real ALDA, will generate this content in a way that will allow you to export it into a format that you can import into your learning environment. So when it gives you the answers to the questions um, and the feedback, um, for example, um, your system should be able to read the multiple choice question, um, know not to show the answer, know where to put all that information so that the multiple choice question works as designed. Obviously, different systems take different sorts of uh, input, um, so that's something we'll have to work on. But there are um, clever ways that we can give it a few examples of, let's say, the annotated or you know um, code wrapped um, lesson that we're generating from Alda, and allow you your um, your own programmer uh, to write. Uh, export examples or your vendor to write export examples, translation examples, and we can just translate the lesson and hopefully eventually the whole module and the whole course over into your system where you'll continue to edit it. And when you're ready and you think it's ready, you'll deliver it to the students. 
that's still running, right? This is this is quite a lot of content that we're generating here. Um, and I'm gonna stop here. There's a lot more I could do. We could go through the exercise of, um, of checking the alignment of uh, learning objectives and assessment questions. I find it's quite good at that. We could ask it to generate thought questions for the uh, students to think about and insert them in. We could ask it to generate um, discussion questions, uh, essay questions. There's all kinds of things that we could continue to do with it. It's still ChatGBT underneath, but we'll stop here. Um, you take the script, you play with it. If you, any of those ideas strike your fancy or anything else, you go and do it. It's all yours. You have the power. Thanks uh, for watching, and I hope that as you experiment with this, you'll come back to the blog post scroll down to the comment section and tell me what you've learned. Share with us all what you're learning by playing with the script. That's the purpose of rapid prototyping. Thanks again.